say, well, this man might change before death. Okay, no problem. Or this woman might change before death. Okay, no problem. You see? But you cannot doubt that this kufr is false. You cannot say, well, I don't know. Maybe it's right, maybe it's not. You know, this is, the religion of Allah is not like that. The truth is clear. And then we have the kufr of, uh, called in Arabic, i'rab. I'rab means uh, yani, to avoid the faith for a worldly gain. You know it's the truth. You have no doubt. But because you feel that if you follow it, your worldly affairs will be in jeopardy. So you don't seek it. An example of this, Hercules, Herakl, in the time of the Prophet Sallallahu You see, the Prophet sent him a letter calling him to Islam. The Prophet sent letters to many leaders in his time. Hercules was amongst those who received the letter. Hercules was a king and he was a priest, a great priest in his time. He had a friend in Ammuria, Damascus, very close friend. That friend was only a priest, a monk in, 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 in the church, secluded himself. Okay. When the letter reached Hercules, he sent a letter to his friend in Ammuria, and he told him, have you heard about this man? He is truly the messenger of Allah according to what I know from the book. So when that friend heard it, he trusts Heraklion. He knows him. He's a big knowledgeable man. So he became a Muslim. And he declared that no one is worthy, worthy of being worshipped but Allah and Muhammad, the Messenger of Allah. The people killed him. They brought him down and killed him. And he was prepared. And he was nothing, he had nothing to lose. Okay, so, alhamdulillah, but his faith was strong, so he did it. Hercules wanted to do it. So he went and he asked that all gates be closed, okay, of the castle. And there were all kinds of priests and people, important people there. So Hercules told the people that I have received this letter from this man and he is truly the messenger of Allah according to my knowledge of the Bible. So, the, the priests got very angry that, you know, how could he accept Islam, you know? So they wanted to get out of the castle. So Heracle got scared because if they get out, they can do to him like what they did to that other priest. They can make the people rebel against him and kill him. And maybe he'll lose his kingdom. Okay. So Hercules said, when he saw this, he said, come back, come back, come back, come back, come back. I, I, I just wanted to test your faith. Come back, come back. You see? This was only a test for your faith. Come back. So they prostrated for him. And he did not become openly a Muslim. Even though if he became a Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ would leave him as the king. If it was up to the Prophet ﷺ, he would leave him as the king. Just like he did to other leaders, you know. He, he would leave them as the, their leaders. Because Islam is not about uh, life, you know. Islam is about guidance and faith, you see. And this is called Kufr al-Iraq. Also another example of Kufr al-Iraq is like the uncle of the Prophet ﷺ, Abu Talib. Abu Talib was one of the biggest supporters of the Prophet ﷺ, even though the Prophet ﷺ, uh, يعني, even though uh, he didn't uh, become a Muslim, okay? He was so strongly supporting the Messenger that 
he accepted to be under the boycott of the non-Muslims for three years with the Prophet for three years. Very strong boycott. He stayed with the Prophet even though he was not a Muslim. Okay. And he did so much to protect the Prophet Okay. But at the time of his death, when he was on bed, de uh, deathbed, the Prophet ﷺ came to him and he said nicely to him and gently, Oh my uncle, say la ilaha. A word you say that will save you from hellfire. Abu Talib knew that he is the messenger because he has seen the seal here and he was following him since childhood, knowing that he is the messenger of Allah. You see? And yet, for some wisdom of Allah, Allah did not want him to become a Muslim. Okay. So the man did not say la ilaha illallah. Because there was Abu Jal next to his head and he was telling him, no, don't change the religion of your ancestors. It is a shame. It is a shame. Don't change it, you see. And that's what happened. He didn't change it. He died on the religion of his ancestors. So for the sake of some false reputation in this world, he rejected the truth even though he was near death. He was at the deathbed death. You see? So this is Kufr al -Iraq. And then we have Kufr al-Istikbar. To have false pride. You know it's the truth, but you have false pride in you. You don't want to follow it. You see? And then we have finally Kufr al Nifaq, which is uh, Kufr, unfaith in the heart, hidden. You don't show it, you show the opposite. And this will be the subject or the theme of the next 12 verses, Nifaq. And this is very dangerous. Nifaq is very dangerous, actually. That's why Allah chose only two verses for the clear kufr and 12 verses here and the whole surah, the whole chapter later on and tens of other verses in, any, in, in many other chapters about hypocrites. You see, because the more something is dangerous, the more it is talked about and the more you should be warned against, you see. And hypocrisy is very bad. It's a disease in the heart. You see, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described them here in those verses by saying they have a disease in their heart. Doubt in the truth, doubting the truth. This is a disease, you see. Allah uncovered it because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in surah chapter of the hypocrites, he said to the Prophet sallam, oh, they come to you and they say, oh, we testify that you are the messenger of Allah. And Allah knows that they don't have faith in you. you see. Allah knows their hearts. You see. So those people, the hypocrites, only use statements of faith by their tongue for worldly gains. That's it. Otherwise, in their hearts, they are not faithful. They hate faith, the right faith. They hate the one, the fact that no one should be worshipped but Allah. They hate that. Muhammad is the messenger of Allah and that he is the one who should be followed. They hate that there is a hereafter and that they will be resurrected and that they will be judged. What do you hate about that? That's the only way of justice. What do you think? Someone lives here for 70 years as a criminal should be treated as the same as someone who lives in this 70 years doing his best to be a good person? You th is that your Lord? that you are thinking of, that he will take this and forgive him and take this and forgive him and that's it. This is not the right way, you see. God is all just, you see. It's true he is all merciful, but mercy is not the only quality that Allah has. He's all wise, he's all just, and at the top of that, his punishment is the most severe. Why did he prepare hellfire? Hellfire is so huge, big. You see? 
It's not something easy, you see. And why did he prepare eternity in her fire for some people? Not for all people. Some people will get out of her fire. But they are, they are only the ones with the right faith, at least. But they have a lot of sins. So they, they are taken to her fire, and then they will be taken out. But uh, regarding the ones with the wrong faith, that's it. This is their chance. This life is their chance. No other chance. <clears throat> so the uh, first verse regarding the hip, or should we make it questions and then uh, next time we go to bed? I'm just waiting for the food. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, go ahead. Go ahead. All right. What I'm getting out of this is. There's a, they're motivated more because if they recognize the fact, then that's going to eliminate their status. Yes. Which means they'll put them on the same level as everyone else. So I think that they recognize it and understand it, but they don't want to lose that status, so they ignore it. Right. That's, uh, if someone does not accept the truth mm -hmm. just for the sake of status or any wealthy gain, then he is not faithful. The fact that he is convinced in his heart that this is the truth is not enough in Islam. You see? And in Islam... He's more greedy than faithful. Yeah, he is more greedy than faithful. And he, he put his own desires before the love of God. What kind of uh, faith is this, you see? It's not. Yeah. Sometimes a person could be weak and uh, yeah, he does something which displeases God. But at least when he does it, he doesn't think he's doing the right thing. He knows he's doing the, 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 the wrong thing. So he's sinning by this, but he did not lose his faith. Okay? He did not lose his all faith. So did I understand you right when you said if a, if a believer who's still not kept completely to the path, has made mistakes, has, has sinned, that they will, they will suffer hell fire, but there is a chance that they can be purified in some way through that and, and released, having done their punishment? Is that yes, anyone who is uh, faithful, even those who followed Jesus in his time, those who followed Moses in his time, those who, who followed any messenger in his time, okay, but they had shortcomings, they had sins, okay, they will not remain in hellfire forever, you see. But uh, they are sinners only, and their sins did not reach the level of rejecting the faith in one way or another, you see. So, those people are two categories. One category will be punished in hellfire, then will be taken out. The other category will not even be punished. You see? And does that, suppose that, is there a level, suppose that they, there might be someone who is in that condition and they were minor sins, often perhaps. Yes. And what about someone who strayed once but big time. Who what? Well, who who strayed once but their crime was was yeah, like murder terrible. or killing or yeah, something yeah, bad. Yeah. yeah. Very ugly. And then if, uh, and then perhaps well, not realize it was wrong if they must have known it at the time. But is there hope for them? Even if he realized it was wrong and he has done it, let's say murder. Yeah, yes. Murder in Islam is the biggest crime after rejecting the faith itself, you see. The Prophet ﷺ said in a true hadith, Allah does not forgive associating partners with God in worship and murder. And he put murder with associating partners with God. But the scholars said, since Allah says in the Quran, Allah forgives 
associate, uh, Allah does not forgive associating partners with him in worship, but he forgives what is less than that for, for those whom he wills. Then that means when the Prophet said the murderer will not be forgiven, he meant he would not be forgiven without punishment first. You see? This is very important to take one verse in light of other verses, in light of hadith. You see, otherwise, in many situations, people will uh, get the wrong understanding from uh, even Quran, even the Sunnah, you see. So uh, this is the point, that if someone does something very ugly, then he is under the will of God, you see. He might be punished, but he will definitely come out if he died as faithful, you see. No one will remain in hellfire who truly says La ilaha illallah. Can you say it with its seven conditions that we have mentioned, you know, knowing its meaning, uh, giving its rights, the right uh, faith, and so on. So if, if, if he dies on La ilaha illallah truly, then that means he will not be in hellfire forever. Definitely. This is the way of al And very important your point, which is a big discussion today in all of uh, Europe and world, is that those people who were present during the prophecies of the messengers, Musa, Musa, Isa, Ibrahim, because some people take that text to mean those people who believe in the faith that's presented today. No. Those people, after sending Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, no one has the right to remain on any other religion. The Prophet sallallahu said, uh, "No one amongst my nation, meaning the nation that I have been sent to, not the nation who responded by accepting the Muslims. No, we have. When he says my nation, it is two nations." First, the everyone. And because he was sent to everyone, you see. So he says, no one amongst my nation who hears about me and yet does not accept my message, even if he is Christian or Jew, the prophet says, except that he will go to hellfire. That's because Allah says it clearly in the Quran. وَمَنْ يَبْتَغِ غَيْرَ الْإِسْلَامِ دِينًا فَلَنْ يُقْبَلَ مِنْهُ وَهُوْ فِي الْآخِرَةِ مِنَ الْخَاسِرِينَ Anyone who accepts other than Islam as the religion, then you, it will not be accepted from him in the hereafter. And he will be amongst the losers in the hereafter. You see? And he says, إِنَّ الدِّينَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ الْإِسْلَامِ The only religion in the sight of Allah which is accepted is Islam. Someone might say, how about those who followed Jesus in his time? You say they are Muslims. They submitted to God and they worshiped God. That's Islam, you see. How about those who followed Musa in his time? They are Muslims, you see. And even in Quran, they are called Muslims, you see. Because they, they followed their messenger and they were worshiping God alone and they were praying, giving charity, and making pilgrimage, all what we do, you see. All what we do, the fundamental things, not only of the faith, but of Islam itself. Establishing the prayer, giving the charity, giving uh, the uh, going to Hajj. This is all from every religion, every true religion. Can I ask a question? Yes. So, in the historical time before the Prophet, um, but after Jesus, if, if, if people who followed Jesus when he was still alive or there, right. they, they would have seen him as a teacher, as a messenger, as a prophet, not to God. Right. But at some stage, and I'm not sure what, but at some stage, he was elevated by men. They interpreted him as being God. Right. So it, it would be people who <laughs> went that way, they, they're not... They are not they're faithful not, in Jesus. Faithful. No. But the ones before. They changed the fundamental thing that uh, oh. Jesus taught, do you see? I and mean, they changed the, the fundamental thing which Jesus yeah. taught. That is worshipping God alone. Exactly. You see? So they are not Christians anymore. Even if they call themselves Christians. 
They are not Christians, you see. We call them the people of the book until now, not because they are truly following the book, but because they call themselves that, okay? I understand, yeah. Other, otherwise, they, they have nothing from the book. Yeah. Nothing but drinking wine. That's all. And they got it wrong. Drinking wine doesn't mean drinking something which intoxicates you and makes you lose your mind. What you should keep in mind is that all the prophets said there is no God but Allah. Yeah. From yes. Adam to Muhammad. But this has been erased in historical facts. You didn't hear that Moses said there is no God but Allah. You didn't hear that Abraham said there is no God but Allah. You didn't hear that uh, uh, Ishmael or any other prophet. You only hear Muhammad said there is no. But in reality, Jesus, Adam, Elijah, all Yusuf, all the prophets said there is no God but Allah. Okay? And the true, true symbol of the people who were following Jesus is the fish. But when the people overturned the belief, they replaced it with the cross and the lies. You see, so this is what is being erased from the history of Christianity, that at one time, the symbol of the people who followed Isa salam, was the fish, because he performed the miracle by feeding the crowd with the fish that would not finish from the basket, okay? So he did the miracle and the people saw it with their own eyes. This is what created the friction between the house of Israel. They didn't want somebody to show up that the people would follow in masses and you know, not pay attention to them, even though they had fabricated the Torah. All books have been fabricated except the Quran. That's what's makes the Quran different than other religions. The book is not fabricated one letter. And that battle is still that well. It's happening today. Again, you have since since the original Bible came, you had only four versions. Now you have maybe 145 <coughs> versions. Ooh, you see? 145 versions of the Bible. Seven day Adventists, Jehovah Witness, uh, Scientology. You've got a bunch of crazy. You've got a bunch. They just keep coming, keep coming at generation. Scientology is also a Christian. Scientology gets his idea from the Bible that there is something, angels and something above us in the sky that have superpowers. And so they decided to make their religion based on just one section of the Bible and call it Scientology. If it is in the sky, if we cannot see it, it is science. You know, this is what I mean, that Christianity has came a wild way since the first beginning of Christianity. The original gospel of Jesus was tampered with by the, the tribe, by the people who called themselves the tribe of Bani Israel. The next trampled with was the New Testament. And the next was revived text, and so on, and Lutheran doctrine, and Catholic doctrine, and all of them kept changing and injecting lies, and lies, and lies. So that's why the Quran came, because Allah wants to show you, I can lead the people to follow me, they never saw me. I can lead the people to back to the garden, they didn't know nothing about me, but they had faith. Nowadays, anyone who follows the truth, he will be rewarded more than the companions of the Messenger As a matter of fact, the same action that you do now, you will get 50 times reward as the companions did. Why? Because everything was clear to them. Muhammad was there. And the revelation was coming down on him. They would see, even the angel would come and they would see him sitting with the Prophet and teaching him sometimes. Okay? So why not to believe? Plus the miracles that they saw with the Prophet. Yeah, they saw miracles. A lot of miracles, you see. The moon split they into two with the, uh, you know, pagan worshippers said to the, to the messenger, show us a miracle. And Allah showed them the miracle right in, the, in front of them. And they asked the, the food to come it, from the sky. Yeah, it, 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 it split into two in front of their eyes. Okay. They said, no, he's, he's a magician. He's fooling with our eyes. Okay. And you know, they asked for it, you see. And if some wouldn't. <laughs> yes. Huh? Some would have been impressed, I guess. They asked the food to come from the sky. And the many other miracles. Manna you know? from heaven. When, Manna from heaven. Manna and quail. They asked the food to come. Yeah. Show us the food coming from the sky. Then we will believe. The Prophet would put his hand like this with some little water. And it would be a spring of water for thousands of people to drink from. You see? 
And everyone saw it. He would bring some remains of food, piece of bread here, piece of bread there, and put it here, and then rub it with his hand and say some words uh, to uh, ask Allah to bless it. And it will be the food for a whole soldier, a whole army, to eat from and to carry with them, with them on the camels. <laughs> you see? Just a little bit like that for hundreds of people. They would eat and fill their stomachs and take with them for their journey. <laughs> so they have seen the Prophet ﷺ. In the beginning of Islam, the Prophet ﷺ, whenever he was passing by a stone or a rock, it would say, As-salamu alaykum, O Rasulullah. To strengthen their faith, they were shown more miracles at the beginning. You see? Just to strengthen them for their faith because they are the foundation of the nation. You see? So that's why Allah showed them a lot of miracles, a lot of signs. You see? Ali radiallahu anhu came with some disease in his eye. The Prophet spit on it and it became healed. And many other things like that can happen. Is it possible for miracles to happen to regular people yes, uh, yes. who are not prophets, yes. even in this day and age? It happened to the companions. They walked on water with their horses yes. in one army, in one, uh, uh, in one uh, yes. fighting. Yes. Fight. They walked on the water. See, this is even stronger of miracle than what happened to Musa when he yes. split the sea. They had to split the sea to walk on dryness. But the companions walked on the water itself with their horses. <laughs> and many other miracles that happened to them. Yes, belief in miracles is one of the pillars yes, of Islam. One. Yeah, one of the things. Even in Afghanistan, when the Russians were yes, killing the Muslims, right. many miracles happened. And they, some, one, one uh, brother recorded them in a book. Uh, maybe he has exaggerated something, but a lot of it did happen. The people saw. saw you see. He saw you the angels help from Allah, of course. Yeah. He saw the angels helping them fight. He saw. This is uh, important because sometimes, the brother Peter, you see someone do something which might look like a miracle, but it's a devilish trick or it, it's, yes, yes. it's from yeah, the devil. Yeah, yeah. Like those deviants who uh, worship.